Hey Salesforce friends and welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Adam Foyston and I'm a Salesforce consultant that's based in the UK and I've actually been involved with Salesforce for about 15 years now. 2006 is when I started kicking off in Salesforce. So I've been around for a little bit and in today's video, what we'll be looking at is the flows again, but specifically how you can debug your flows. So let's get straight into it. Let's have a look right now. Right, so we are straight into my uh, developer org. If you've seen these videos before, then you will know that in the description, you, there will be a link to sign up for your own developer org. If you haven't already, I always recommend to do so. You can try things out, follow tutorials like in these videos, uh, or even just if you're interested to see what is available in Salesforce. Um, maybe your org hasn't got Einstein licensing or, or um, partner portals, Excel, um, experience cloud or anything like that. You can try it out in developer org and then come back to them with some, with some research, some, some knowledge, some uh, examples. However, let's get back to this. It's flow debugging. Now, go to setup and your home and in the quick find, you can see I've already been typing this before, type flow and we can go to the flows that are already here now i've got i've created some flows already if you haven't created a flow yet you're probably not interested in this video because debugging is when you've created a flow however um this new contact um flow is the one that was created in a previous video that I did where we uh, together build a simple flow, which is effectively one of the trailhead examples. Please, if you haven't already, follow along, do it, log in uh, with a trailhead account, uh, if you haven't got one, sign up, of course, so that you can earn your badges and get your, you know, go towards your accreditations and everything. Uh, this other one, AS Flow 2, uh, not very well named, is uh, from another flow video that I did, another link up the top there, for a more complex case from one of you subscribers out here, one of your, your, you uh, in the audience, uh, that asked for a specific use case about vouchers and everything. So if you're interested in looking at more complex flows, there you go. Now. I wanted to highlight these two because they're different flows. And this is key because there's been a, a recent change in the Summer 21 release. Now this screen, this new contact one, the, the trailhead example, is a screen flow, uh, meaning there is a screen where you fill in some form elements or whatever it might be. And the debugging for that was usually quite good. However, this other one, the use case one that I did, was, it's called auto launch, launch, auto launch, auto launched flow and effect effectively it's kind of like a record triggered flow in other words something happens a, a user will create a new record or update a record um, or maybe some value within the record has changed update record and that will then automatically launch a flow because the system's looking at that object and the records and seeing if it meets the criteria to start that particular flow now, the debugging for that type of flow was not very good. It was difficult. And, and at the point of when I was doing this use case, um, trying out a few things that didn't seem to work right, it was very, very difficult. However, Summer 21, you now have the ability, which we're going to see now, to do better debugging. But let's go back to this screen flow one. And actually, you can see there's, there's other flows here. I didn't create these. These are templates, or it says managed installed. In other words, what, when I start the, 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 um, the dev org, they were already there. And if you go to, you can use those if you don't have any already. You know, there's supposed to be inspiration ones that Salesforce create for you. Um, you can clone them and tweak them and use them for your own org. Or you can go to the, um, what's it called? App Exchange. Go to the App Exchange and you will see other third parties and companies that have created their own flows and give them out for free as a template or you can buy them um, and you can then tweak them and customize them. So if you don't already have created a flow, there's a good starting point. However, let's go back to uh, this screen flow. So I'm going to click on it and in Lightning, it opens up in a new tab. Great. And this is already active. You don't have to have it inactive to, to debug it and run it or anything, but yeah, there you go. It's currently active, fine. Um, you've probably maybe tried this, seen the button. So if you click run, yes, I can now type in and, and run my flow 
as if I'm a user uh, normally. Um, however, we're debugging. If I click debug, and the difference between running it and debugging it, just in case it's not obvious, is that I'm going to run it. I'm basically going to just try it out, and then it ends, and then there you go. If something goes wrong, or I want to see what's happening in the background, I'm not going to see it with a run. With debug, I will. But before we get into that debug screen, here's a few little things to look at. Run the latest version of each flow called by subflow elements. So this is essentially saying, and this isn't the case with this one, but if you've got quite a complex flow that might have subflows, other flows that are connected, either in a parent-child or child-parent relationship, then it's going to look for that subflow and run it, or if the subflow is calling something else and calling this flow, then there you go. All of that interconnectivity, any dependent, interdependent flows will run as part of this debug. If you don't want that, uncheck the box. We'll leave it. Fine. It's always good to do more than less. Uh, the other one is show details of what's executed and render flow in Lightning Runtime. So two things in there. Show details of what's executed. We want to see that. And render flow in Lightning Runtime. What's Lightning Runtime? So Lightning Runtime is effectively anything. So this screen flow, if you have this, or maybe a flow that's in a Visual Force component, that's going to run in classic runtime. In other words, like the classic Salesforce view that I know a lot of big companies still have, by the way, have not moved to Lightning for a lot of reasons. We'll go into another video. If you're already in Lightning and this flow is, is being executed or is running from, especially with this screen, running from a Lightning page or Lightning component or something, it will run in Lightning runtime. So this is saying if Lightning Runtime isn't enabled for your org, it's like it might not be enabled if you're in a classic um, Salesforce org, as in not the Lightning sexy looking UI, um, and then you'll need to activate that in order to, for it to run like that. So that's what that is. That's a bit niche, I guess, depending on your org. The other bit is quite interesting. So run flow as another user, and I believe this was a, a recent update in, in this year's 2021 updates. The option is disabled for your org's process automation settings. Right, well, I, I want to run this as a separate, a different user. This is really useful, actually, because what developers sometimes do is they go, blah, 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 I've done it. And then they ship it and then didn't realize that the users using it are salespeople with a certain profile that don't have visibility for a certain field. So it fails. So this is very, very important that you debug flows Big thing, debug flows logged in as other users. How else are you gonna know whether it's gonna work for the person you're building it for? The salesperson, the service person, the sales manager, whatever. Um, but I can't click it. So how do I do that? I go back to setup and process auto, there you go, process automation settings. And if I scroll all the way down, by the way, if you haven't got a default workflow user, you need to put one in there for this to save. I think sometimes it's blank if it's a new org. And at the bottom here, we've got let admins debug flows as other users. Check that to true. Click save. Groovy. Now, if I, I don't know if this will work if I refresh, let's have a look. Ooh, it did. Um, <laughs> Run flow as another user. Fantastic. So I'm in my debug session. So I'm actually just about to debug. Now I can look for other users and log in as them. But I'm in the developer org. So I that's just me. I'm so lonely. Um, so it's just gonna be me anyway. Um, but it'll be great for your orgs. Input variables. The flow has no variables that allow input access or all its input variables are collection variables or apex defined variables which aren't supported for input when debugging. I've got a screen, those are my inputs. So if I just click run, there you go. Now, here's the difference between running and debugging if you don't already know. Here we've got the debug details on the right. So how the interview started, I logged in as another user. Um, that's obviously me. Um, and it even gives you the ID of the user as well. 
Uh, started the flow interview, great. Transaction committed. Any records that the flow was ready to create, update, or delete were committed to the database. Now, this is a screen flow that we're debugging. So you have to be fully aware that what you do here will make an effect in the database. So for example, if I run this and I create a new contact, the contact will exist. If this flow is to email a contact and the contact is a real contact with a real email address, it will send an email to that contact. So be aware of what you're doing in this because, well, firstly, you probably won't be debugging in like this in production. Ideally, you'd be doing it in a dev org before you've committed this you know, to the system, to the main live org. However, if you are in a production org, um, yes, you will have something called uh, flow interviews, which you can interrogate and look at. So you'll probably get an email saying a flow has errored with a link to it and then you'll be able to click the link and actually see the path of that flow and the, very much like this debug that we've been showing, see at what point that record failed. And sometimes that is because maybe you didn't test it properly enough where a certain user tried to run the flow and because they don't have a permission on a certain field or because I don't know, something, something, um, then it's, it's um, gonna run an error. But, one thing that happened in 2020 summer uh, release was that you're able to not commit any changes to the database, but that is only for record triggered flows or like uh, scheduled triggered flows, kind of like auto triggered flows essentially is the, is the name of them all. So we'll look at that in a second. You'll have the ability to prevent that. Um, how can you stop this commit into the database if you don't want it to? Well, like I said, you would probably test this or debug it in a, in a, in a dev org, even if it's a full sandbox copy. Um, but ideally you go to your email deliverability or deliverability se settings and put it to system emails only so that you do get error emails or whatever comes through, but no emails go out to uh, any customers or anything that you've got in your database in the dev org. Little tip. Right, um, right, so let's just like try and do something. Uh, yeah, autocomplete, you can see all the things that I've created before. Daffy Duck, um, let's look at an account, uh, pyramid construction. And if this contact already exists, update the existing record, or yeah, update the existing, or no, create a new contact. So this is almost like a little override. I don't know why they've got that there. Click next. Well done. Great, now I can change the inputs, so I can run again, but what I wanna highlight is that you've got this full debug details here. Now, um, screen, so it tells you where you are, which screen you're in, the lightning component, the input variables that were entered, so the contact variable dot first name, which is in my flow, the name of that variable uh, was Daffy, that was the value, and then duck, Da, 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 da. you get the idea. So this is really good and you can see that the result was a success and that the outcome is shown as well. So the default outcome was executed. If, so that is it really in a screen flow, That's, it's really good. One thing I would add as well is that this is debugging to effectively see if your flow works. However, it's not full testing. So what you want to do is figure out logically does it work based on the requirements. Yeah, so if you go to Trailhead here, and this is a good example actually, to see that in the make sure your flow works uh, section, you could search for that in the Trailhead search. You can see it mentions about create a test plan. So that's going to be imperative to make sure that you're not just seeing if it works just for you or even as another logged in user, but it actually meets the requirements that were set out originally because I'm guessing all, most, if not all, of your development is coming through from requirements from the business. If it's not from the business, which could still be valid, it could be coming through uh, consultants like yourself who know the business really well and want to uh, maybe do some analysis with some CXO level people or sales managers, whatever. And you've gone, do you know what? There's some really good things that we can do for the business. Let's look at the process flows. Let's see how we can automate things and come up with some requirements. However, regardless of where they come from, the standard process is that you would get the requirements written down, logged down. And if you do in agile, there is a standard template of the, as a, so-and-so user, I want to perform a task uh, so that I can get this result. 
And that's the usual structure for any kind of like agile based requirements gathering. Now, whether you do agile or not, a requirement is saying, this is what I want to do. You can then interpret, interpret that as a developer to achieve it a certain way. Then you have the requirements owner say, oh yeah, that's, didn't expect you were going to do it like that, but actually, no, that, that does meet my need. Thank you very much. But there'll be acceptance criteria in there. In other words, regardless of how you've done it, we need to do these things, which is coming from the requirement, which is essentially shown very much like in this table where you're going, okay, I need a contact to be created when um, a new a contact, an existing contact is not found. So that is a requirement. That's an acceptance criteria. And therefore, this is what this trailhead is trying to convey, is that when you're testing a flow, you've, you need to create a test plan. In other words, okay, what's the setting of the toggle that I've got? And that's in that screen flow. You know, is it on or is it off? So if it's deselected off and the matching record doesn't exist, I would expect the result to be a new contact's created, confirmation screen including a working link to the record, Blah, 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 blah. And it's covering every different scenario. Selected, deselected, record exists, record doesn't exist. And that is the really what testers are really great at doing. I'm not a tester. I struggle to concentrate and go through every permutation. So that's why I would recommend, if you haven't already, to use proper testers for these types of things. They can really get it done very, very well. But if you don't have the resources or the ability to do that, no worries, uh, just there is a framework that you can go through and maybe in another video we'll look at some of the best practice that you can do around things like requirements gathering, uh, the kind of the business analyst part of the consultant's role, uh, as well as the design and then the implement, the development, but also the testing and implementation side of it. Um, anyway, let's go back, just letting you know about that. Let's go back to the um, flows again. That's the screen flow, we've gone through that, fantastic. Now, here's the difference with a record triggered flow. So if I close this and I go back to my flows, uh, I'm gonna go to this complex one that I created in the use case that I mentioned. I say it's complex, it's not the most complex because you, you don't see, so, <laughs> some flows you look at, I've got like 100 things floating around and it's like, oh my God, that's so complex. This is probably more complex than, well, it is more complex than the simple one but there's complexity built within it in terms of mathematical logic and things. Anyway, um, how do you debug them? What's the difference in debugging this? So if I click debug, there, is, there are some extra things that you can see here. Now, one of them is skip start condition requirements. So what this does, you see this component here, it's just in gray a bit, but this one, which is start record triggered flow. There are some conditions that need to happen before you can have it. One is that the object is the op an opportunity. Um, and that the conditions, there's one condition which is saying if it's closed one or set to closed one. You can skip that so that you can kind of, you should be testing this first bit, but you can skip it to kind of make it a bit quicker to run through it, but we'll leave it off for now. Run flow as another user. Great, I've still got that feature because I activated it. But the big difference between the screen flow and auto triggered flows is this one run flow in rollback mode. Rollback mode, yes, it's the thing that I mentioned a bit ago that it's not gonna commit any of the changes to the database. And you can see that by the eye. It runs flow without permanently changing the data in your Salesforce records. Great, so once you've finished it, it, it goes back to the original state. And you'll also see in the description as well that record triggered flows always run in rollback mode. So I don't have the ability to uncheck this, it's already checked. Fine, I'm happy with that. Um, if you did want it to commit to the database, use it in real time. Use it not in debug mode, use it in normal mode. Uh, triggering the record for the debug run, we trigger the flow as if the record is created, updated or deleted. Great, so we need a record. So that's where we search for a record. And let's just pick Dickinson Mobile Generators. The other key thing is I can run it as if it was created or it was updated. So if I click it as if it was updated, it doesn't really matter. Run, well, it doesn't matter if you're doing the debugging, but you know what I mean, for this example. Uh, you can see here that I've got how the interview started. It was triggered by me as a user with the, that ID. And the record that triggered it was the update of that 
record that I selected in the drop down. Great. And then it didn't meet the conditions. Oh, right. Okay, so let's look at the conditions again. Stage name equals closed one. Hmm. It's probably because the record was already closed one. Um, so that is why you debug again and skip the start condition requirements. So an example there of why that can be useful. So let's just run that again. Ah, there we go. So it's just skipped it for this session. And now I'm gonna do all the rest of the flow. And you can see here, which is really great, you can see the path in this orange bold line of where it went in terms of the logic of that particular example. And then you can see here it's not continued. So why is that? Is it because it's errored? It's failed? Well, debugging isn't always, oh, something's wrong. It could just be finding out where, how it actually works and, where, and if it works correctly. So you can see it stops at the decision. So if I actually scroll down to these other bits here, you can see that before the rollback, where it doesn't commit the records to the database, you can see that um, decision. So this is my decision element. Uh, skipped this outcome because its conditions weren't met. Yes. So what it's saying is, is that, okay, the number of vouchers variable was 40 is not less than this other op divided by variable, which is 40. So 40 is not less than 40. So finish. So it works. If that number was 40, uh, no, 39, uh, it would be less than 40. So then it would move on to the next bit. And that's where the debugging can occur. Great, so, I mean, effectively, that is the debugging differences between your screen flow debugging and your record triggered flow debugs. Well, I hope you found that video useful. If you, like I mentioned in the video, wanna try out building a flow or even looking at the more complex use case flow that I mentioned, then please go ahead and look at those. And of course, that's really important, please engage with me in the video. Let me know if you found this useful. Uh, and also, if you've got any suggestions for any other videos that might be useful for other people in the community or that are specific to you as well. Thank you very much again. And um, until the next time, may the Salesforce be with you.